Reynolds with Solomon Colors and Brickform. And today we're at our Brickform training facility and we're here to talk to you about surface preparation. Surface preparation is probably the most important step in application of products such as acid stains, water-based stains, our, our freestyle product, our Semcoat, and any of our overlays. We have a slab here, for example, that has a lot of issues going on with it, okay? And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk to you about some basic surface preparation techniques. We've got some equipment that we brought in, and we're going to show you some of the, uh, some of the different techniques for achieving what we refer to as concrete surface profile. This is a brick form technical information sheet. I pulled this off offline, www.brickform.com. And if you look uh, on these technical information sheets, it has the guidelines for all the installation procedures uh, that we specify when we're um, going through and, and telling people how to install our products. In here, in each one, is a section called preparation. And when you read through this, you're going to see that we reference the iCry standards and the CSP, Concrete Surface Profile Standards, uh, that are outlined in the concrete repair manual uh, that's uh, produced by the International Concrete Repair Institute. When we go into this book and you look at these technical guidelines, you'll notice that there's a number of different concrete surface profiles. And we reference all of these. Uh, we reference the concrete surface profiles in the TIS and that's what we require and that's what we're going to talk about in this video and show you how we achieve those so that when you go out to prep a project for a brick form uh, installation you're going to have success. Now there's a lot of different surface profiles from 1 through 9. This is a real useful tool to have. These uh, keychains uh, are available through the International Concrete Repair Institute and you can go online and order these and basically what it will give you is a, a definition of what that texture should feel like uh, when you get done profiling your sur surface. And you'll see throughout this video we're going to get close-ups on, on all of the surface, surfaces that we prep and we're going to show you how close we are to these these, uh, these standards that you'll see in these molds that come from the uh, iCry website. Okay. So we're going to show you some of the techniques today to get to those different surface profiles using various types of equipment. Now if you look over this slab, it's pretty rough. Okay. A lot of guys would, would, uh, would probably tear out and replace this concrete, but since it's up on a platform, it'd be difficult. It's probably heavily reinforced and, uh, and it may, it's still a candidate for resurfacing, staining, or, or a lot of different products that we can put down to make this thing look a lot better. But what, obviously, you know, you, we've got a lot of things going on. We've got cracks, we've got coatings, we have rock pops, chips, spalls, uh, rust, sealers that's, that's been spilled on the surface, a lot of different things. You can see right here, there's a heavy, heavy layer of sealer down that's been spilled underneath the pallet. Um, a lot of different products have been applied over here. A lot of different damage. This concrete is probably, I would say, 30 years plus old. Um, you've got a lot of the aggregate that's been exposed over the years and uh, different, just different uh, repairs and stuff like that that need to take place. But first and foremost is the surface preparation, okay? We have to get this down to bare concrete. If we don't get it down to bare concrete, there's a good chance that our products uh, won't bond properly. So to, to, to really get down and dirty with this, we've got we've to try a number of different techniques to get all, these, all this stuff off of here. It's really important when you're doing surface preparation to make sure that you get rid of any loose concrete. If you run a hammer over this concrete and tap on it, you can hear that it's pretty sound, okay? Pretty sound concrete. But if you run this over, there are hidden spots. If you can focus in on that, Adam, you can see this little, this little break right here, okay? That concrete is getting ready to pop, okay? If you run your hammer over it, you hear that? That's telling you that that concrete is loose. 
and it needs to come out. Okay? See how that spall just popped right out? And that loose material, that would have caused a debonding. Okay? Because over, over time, freeze-thaw cycles, that would have caused you some problems. So it's important to go over the whole surface. And you can do that with a hammer. You can do it with a rubbing stone. I'm coming right back. Uh, <clears throat> you can do it with a rubbing stone. And you can hear you can hear stuff like this. So you hear that. Again, that stuff has to come out. Or else it can cause problems with your bonding. Now, once we clean this, we can come back and patch these, and then they won't give us any problems down the road. It's very important to seek out all of these surface balls and make sure that you get them completely removed prior to applying any type of coating. In situations where you have severe spalling, it may be necessary to either tear out and replace the concrete, or if the surface is still sound, you may be able to scarify the surface and remove the deteriorated concrete. In this situation, you have a product that is basically deteriorating from the inside out. This is not a good candidate for resurfacing, staining, or anything else. This type of concrete really needs to be torn out and replaced. These little micro cracks are indicating that the concrete is basically exploding from the inside out due to aggregates that retain a lot of moisture. If you run across a situation like this out in the field, just walk away from it or tear it out and replace it. Now it's really important uh, to make sure that your slab is also sealer free. Okay? If you're ever not sure, the easiest way to test is to get some muriatic acid and to just put a little bit of material on a concrete surface. Okay? If it's sealed, it won't bubble much. If you, if you look at this, this really isn't doing much, okay? Because this is sealer. And this is telling you that you got something on the surface that can debond your product. If you look over here now, see how vigorously that bubbles? It's bubbling like a pot of water, a pot of boiling water. This is doing nothing, bubbling. So there's no sealer on this side, okay? So it's important when we do our surface prep to get rid of this so that you uh, make sure that you don't have anything that can uh, um, cause a delamination down the road. Okay? The same way with grease or rust or dirt, anything that's on that surface, we have to make sure that we get it off. And we're going to show you the techniques to really get that concrete squeaky clean. Densely troweled surfaces will require proper profiling as well. It's not enough just to scrub these surfaces if you plan on overlaying or staining. The power troweling process can actually seal the surface and prohibit proper bonding of overlay sealers and can also prevent water-based stains from penetrating and acid stains from reacting properly. Light grinding with polishing type grinders or chemical etching may be necessary to achieve the profile specified in the TIS.